So today I thought I'd walk you through how I'm going to make some birdie mash for Ella. And you'll see all different recipes for this. I don't think there's really any set recipe, but it's basically just mixing together different grains and fruits and vegetables and, and lentils and um, things like that that are really healthy for your bird just to help to get a variety of nutrients and vitamins and foods into their diet. So the first thing I'm actually cooking is long grain brown rice and I've got a cup in there with two cups of water all I'm doing this is just no name rice and I'm just going by the package directions on here and I've also got bulgur quinoa um, whole grain pasta sorry whole wheat pasta and then I've got different fruits and vegetables I'm going to chop up to add once I've done all the cooking been about 40 minutes and our brown rice is now done so I'm moving on to quinoa and for you, those of you who don't know this is quinoa here it is a really light fluffy grain and it is so good for you and for your bird um, it's high in proteins and a lot of different vitamins and nutrients including calcium so it's good to feed who birds that are prone to egg laying like our little Ella and it's really easy to cook but the secret to getting rid of this kind of um, waxy kind of taste that it has is to give it a really good wash in a strainer before cooking it so that's what I'm going to do now. So because I'm only cooking out one cup worth um, I'm just using this little strainer here but the trick to knowing that your quinoa is fully rinsed is see all those little bubbles what will happen is the more that you rinse it the less the bubbles will appear and once you're not really getting any foam like that that means you've rinsed off that coating and then you can just throw it in the pot Okay, so now it's really not bubbling at all, which means that I have rinsed it well enough so yeah, it's not really bubbly. So that means I can add it into the pot. The quinoa is done, so I've just thrown it in with the rice. Quinoa really expands, so one cup of quinoa I think equals three cups once it's cooked, which is pretty cool and it looks all nice and soft and fluffy. So I'm just moving on now to the bulgur. Bob's Red Mill Cracked Wheat Whole Grain Bulgur here. And bulgur is just another really healthy grain um, for birds to eat. And most of these grains have the same kind of cooking instruction. It, it's one part grain to two parts water. So I'm making a cup of everything. So it's like one cup of the grain and then two cups of the water so with this one you have to let the water boil first and then add it so that's what I am waiting on right now. The bulgur had just finished cooking I've actually never made this before but that's what it looks like when it's all done so I'm just gonna start um, chopping up some fruit and some veggies that I'm gonna mix in and then I'm going to bag everything so these are split peas and lentils and you don't want to buy the canned ones because they usually have salt and things added to them. You want them to be as fresh as possible. Now I didn't realize that I need to soak these overnight in warm water before I cook them up. So what I'm going to do is just get them um, washed really well and then put them in some warm water and tomorrow I will continue the mash and film again then. The rest of the food that I've already made up, I'm just going to um, cover and put in the fridge overnight. The other thing you want to do is remove ones like with the lentils that are this yellow color. That means they're kind of bad. So I'm going to remove those first and then give them a good wash. So I've just finished rinsing them and I'm going to let them sit overnight. Uh, just a heads up, you want to rinse them really, really well and um, mix them around and drain and re-rinse again. Kind of like you do with the quinoa, just because it comes right from the ground so it can have 
some dust and dirt and things in there as well as like little twigs and rocks and you just want to make sure that you're removing or getting rid of these ahead of time so I'm going to package this up for now and continue tomorrow so this morning I drained the lentils and peas and just gave them a quick rinse and now I'm just bringing them to a boil it's said to boil them for 10 minutes and then let them simmer for 20. Um, lentils are a bit of a messy business it looks like, but that's okay. So I'm just getting them all ready and then I'm going to add them to the rest of the mash. I've almost forgot about the sweet potatoes, so I've just chopped them up. I left the skin on them because there's just a small amount and I actually find it easier to remove the skin after it's cooked. Um, and then I've just chopped it up into large pieces. Um, I'm just going to let this boil and cook for a bit and then I'll drain it, remove the skin and mash it up. And in the meantime, I am going to start chopping up my veggies. So I've just got some fruits and vegetables here. I have yellow pepper, some apples, uh, some carrots, collard greens and kale. And again, you can just put whatever fruits and veggies you know your bird likes in your mash. Just make sure that they are safe fruits and vegetables for, first for your bird. If you're having difficulties feeding a certain type of vegetable or fruit to your bird, try offering it in different ways. So Ella actually doesn't care for a baby carrot given to her like this. She doesn't really like it chopped up, but what I have found is she likes it when it's grated. So I actually grate my carrots with like a cheese grater and um, just sprinkle it over top kind of like little shavings and then she'll eat it. She absolutely loves it. I'm just waiting for the yams to finish so I can mash them up. But everything else is done so I've just got it in this big um, dish here but I'm going to have to get out my really big pot to do all the mixing. I've also just added some turmeric, cumin, and cinnamon, and turmeric and cumin turmeric and cumin are supposed to be really good for digestibility. So I mashed the yams and I've mixed everything together. I've put it in a bigger pot and now I'm just going to bag it up. So all I'm going to do for this last part is put about two or three days worth of mash into each bag. And then that way I can put them in the freezer and bring them out the night before as I use them up. And it'll stay nice and fresh for her. Um, what I would also recommend is that when you feed it in the morning just to heat it up in the microwave or let it sit just for a little bit at room temperature after it comes out of the fridge just so that it's not freezing cold and they can enjoy it a little better. And as you can see, it is a success. So I hope that this helps you guys out. Maybe make your own mash. You can share your recipes down below. And we'll see you later. Bye.